Our next guest predicts Brent North Sea crude could uh, get up to around $150 a barrel, but he claims to have as well a solution to these rising crude oil prices, and it involves, naturally enough, natural gas. Joining us now, a billionaire entrepreneur, T. Boone Pickens. Uh, it is great to see you, Boone. Good. Uh, Good to see you, Lou. We're looking here at an environment with high prices when we've got supply in this country. Gasoline supplies are high. Demand is low, a 15-year low, in fact, for gasoline. Folks are getting a little frustrated uh, dealing with uh, that reality. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, remember, we import a lot of crude oil, mm -hmm. and we're importing uh, the global price, which is Brent North Sea, and consequently, uh, prices are high. Also, the refiners who struggle from time to time, they're seeing that difference between Brent North Sea at 125 and uh, WTI at 105. Right. And uh, so they're ta taking up a little slack, I think. And we're, and we're looking still at an, what, about an $18 differential between Brent and West Texas Intermediate. We're also seeing refineries uh, shut down. Uh, Sunoco talking about uh, more, uh, more closures of capacity. Uh, the, and at the same time, we're looking at natural gas. We're, we're talking two dollars. I, I, I mean, four years it, ago we were it was down another eight cents a while ago. It, it's <clears throat> this is this is grand stuff. If you are a consumer, the problem is we don't have enough owners. Oh, we're going to get them. There's no question that you're switching on the heavy-duty trucks because they're saving a dollar fifty to two dollars a gallon. <clears throat> so it's uh, it's so, an opportunity they're not going to pass up. And yet the conversion cost to move uh, light trucks, pickups, uh, to 18-wheelers is huge, that conversion cost. Well, I'm focused on mm -hmm. class 6 to 8, 18-wheelers, right. and there are 8 million of them. <clears throat> and that, they will phase those out over five years is the way it'll work. And you will go to natural gas, they'll save the money. The difference in the price of the new engine, natural gas right. engine, is about $20,000. So they can pay for that pretty quick. Uh, so for transportation, you look at it as an attractive proposition. I've been talking with a couple of CEOs who are actually following suit and uh, converting to natural gas, converting their fleets, and, and it's happening incrementally. But your, your friend, uh, President Barack Obama, you guys were pretty buddy-buddy when you came up with the uh, Pickens plan. He sort of disappeared on the issue of natural gas, hasn't he? Well, he still mentions natural gas, mm -hmm. but... Uh, of course, what we like to have is the Natural Gas Act passed, right. and that they tried to put on the transportation bill. Right. We won, you know, 5147, but they, <laughs> you know why I'm laughing, don't you? I mean, it's the only place, Washington, you don't win at 5147. You, you win in the Big 12, uh, but you're not, not in Washington. And the reason is they voted that non-germane, if you can believe it. Right. Heavy-duty trucks were not germane to a transportation bill. Right. Right. which meant you had to have 60 votes. We're going to get another chance, I promise you. But I'm just laughing about it. I know, you have to laugh. <laughs> as sophisticated and as sharp a pencil as you have carried with you throughout your career, whether it's in finance, whether it's in oil or natural gas, uh, you, you're actually uh, kind of scratched at those uh, boys and girls down in Washington. Oh, I'm through after this one. I mean, when I get this done, I, I am retiring from Washington. Well, now, all of you, and I'm talking about you, the leaders in, in the fossil fuel uh, industry in this country. I'm talking about coal, natural gas, crude, uh, oil and gas, shale. Uh, you guys have been kind of separated here. Uh, it looks like they've kind of picked you off, this administration. Uh, they pushed away coal, kind of pushed away on crude oil, 16% fewer uh, permits on federal lands uh, mm -hmm. under this administration. Natural gas doesn't get delivered. And yet, alternate energy, and you know a lot about it, particularly wind, you're one of the largest developers of uh, wind power in the country. Uh, this administration's got things upside down, don't they, when it comes to fossil fuels? Well, they do. You're stuck with fossil fuels for 50 years, and you've got to come to grips with uh, just, you know, what you have to work with. But never in America have we been tasked to work out the energy problem for ourselves, because we always had cheap gasoline. And when the price got up to $3 for gasoline, it was a bunch of crying about that. Now it's up to $4. It's going to go higher. There's no question right. it is. 
And, you know, but we do have resources in America. If we just developed our own resources, we can get a lot of energy cheaper. But, Lou, know this, in the world today, the United States has the cheapest energy of any place else right. in the world. And 20% cheaper on, gas, on oil, right. half of the price European for gasoline, right. and natural gas is a fraction in the Mideast and Beijing, it's $15. And we have the richest energy reserves in the world. Right. And, uh, and you mentioned China. I mean, there are such remarkably uh, attractive, rich markets waiting for exports of U.S. energy reserves, if we could exploit and produce them. Uh, what's it going to take to get there? Leadership. That's always a missing link. Right. We've got to have leadership to get to where we want to go. But we can build our economy back on, back on the back of cheap energy. We've done it before. We can do it again. Well, natural gas, I talked to some of the CEOs uh, in, in, in power generation, in utilities. Uh, they're saying natural gas at these prices is going to push coal out of the way. Uh, the EPA's uh, strictures on coal uh, in emissions, new emission standards. Uh, natural gas by itself in the market is going to be a driver against coal. Is that your view? Well, no, it's not my deal. My deal is anything American. Right. I'm not against coal. Right. I'm, I'm for anything American. I do not want OPEC oil. Right. If we get off of OPEC oil, we can get those aircraft carriers out of the Mideast. We can get those, uh, those young people of ours home and not get them killed. And so we can, we can have an entirely different defense set up if we just get out of the Mideast and the way you get out of there. But you know, they're exporting 20 million barrels a day out of the Straits of Hormuz. Right. You know how much of that comes to us? Not much. 10%. Right. So we are, we are policing the Straits of Hormuz for other customers of OPEC. We get no help from them. They don't help us with people. They don't help us with money. Get the hell out of there. All right. Well, with that, Boone, I'm going to have to say we were, we're a little over time, but it's always a, a great time talking with you. Always learn something. Appreciate it, Boone. Good. Thank you, Lou. Good to see you. Well, Boone Pickens was 